I just received my DROC DC to DC converter pair of them actually. And you can see both of them here in the video. The, the one on the bottom, I turned sideways so you could see how the standoffs are installed. The lower one or the smaller standoff you wanna put on the top and the bigger standoff on the bottom. So you've got room for the capacitors the slots in the plexiglass over the heat sink and the heat sink just sticks onto the copper giving you a better heat transfer um, because there will be some loss some power loss as it converts from one dc voltage to another the buttons are on the left hand side the little blue buttons and you, and those guys just stick on top of the buttons there and then the plexiglass goes on top i took the plexi off on the board I'm going to be working with um, just to get rid of some of the glare here for the video. So the the input I have from a, I, I didn't want to wait around for the DC supply that I recommend. Um, so I just grabbed an old power supply from a laptop and carefully stripped it back and made sure none of the wires touched. So anywhere from five to 32 in, and then the output will give anywhere from just over a volt to around 31 volts. The, it's a buck converter, which means it only can reduce voltage and, and the dropout is one volt. So that means if you've got 32 coming in, you can have up to 31 going out. Right now you can see I have 10 volts going out. So I need at least 11 volts going in. It has a on off button and also an in out button. And I can see what's coming in. And from my supply, I've got roughly 20 volts. And that gives me then I can adjust um, whatever voltage I want out. The voltage is adjusted by turning the left hand potentiometer with a screwdriver. So I can take that down to any voltage I want to go down to. So I could go to nine volts if I wanted or back up to 10, all the way down to, like I say, roughly a volt. And then the current, um, the current is a constant current. That's the right hand, that's the right hand potentiometer. And that's gonna be setting the maximum current that can come out. And I have that set to about an amp now. If you turn it counterclockwise um, all the way, you'll bring it down to zero amps and the red constant current light will turn on. So you've got two lights. Um, the output is the top light and you can see that's on. And then the bottom light, you really can't see it too well, but we'll see that when that turns on, that's constant current, meaning it's in, in current mode. You wanna be careful with metal around this um, as I'm being careful, cause it will, it will short it out. So what I'm going to do is go through some measurements with it. Um, since I'm gonna do some measurements, the first thing I'm gonna do is just check out my meter. And so I'm going to connect the two wires together. And when it's in ohms mode, um, I should see something close to zero. If something was broken, then I would see an open circuit. And I want to do that before I start. I want to know that my meter is working. So that's something I do to start out with right away. And then I'm going to go to the easiest measurement, which is voltage. Voltage is the most common. And I'll generally put a wire um, coming out. You can see it's coming out of the out minus there. And I'll, I'll just leave that connected to ground. And then I can connect to, I've got a resistor sitting in the out plus, and I can connect to it and see I'm getting, getting 10 volts um, coming out of it, 9.95. Now, current, um, current is the most difficult measurement. So we'll do that next it can damage the meter. And so I'm gonna move this wire over to the 10 amp setting. So it's a maximum current. And I'm gonna move it down to amps and the vertical or the horizontal bars, which means DC. Once I've done that, the meter will be a short, okay? It'll be a short circuit. That means it's as if the two are touching each other. And so I have a 100 ohm, 100 ohm resistor here, which is a good way to measure current. So the 10 volts over 100 ohm should give me about 100 milliamps. And so if I then touch this completing the circuit, it now has brought ground up to this point 
and we've got the 10 volts right across the 100 ohm giving me 100 milliamps, which is a good way to go, right? So it's a good way to test your meter, make sure you're measuring current properly. Now I've got this set up carefully so that I know it won't give me more than an amp. And that's important because I've got this set right now at 10 amps and I'll break it if I put more than 10 amps through it. I'm going to short the, out, the power supply. The power supply is able to handle that. It will go into constant current mode and properly set up. This is not something you'd want to do until you're really comfortable with the power supply. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually put ground right here on the plus side, right? And that's going to take the voltage down to zero. I'm going to short it out and I'm going to see the maximum current this guy can provide or what it's set for. And you'll notice that the CC light, if you look at the light that's next to the CC, you'll notice that will turn on as soon as I touch this. So you see the light turned on. You can see the CC light turns on. It goes into a constant current mode. The voltage is shorted out. It's now at zero volts and it's providing maximum current. And, and so the, the kind of bottom line here is if you miswire your circuit, that's what you're gonna see. This, I purchased the supply such that it can handle this bad condition. If you wire your circuit and you see that one amp and the red light, you know you've probably miswired it because you probably didn't want it to be at zero volts and sitting at an amp.